A golden oldie is a phrase used to determine something that is old in age, but is still a wealth or a treasure of value. I can't think of a better way to describe the T-29, the premium heavy tank in the American tech tree. It is one of the oldest premiums in War Thunder, and is certainly one of the hardest hitting. I basically exclusively used this tank to grind out the majority of the American tech tree, and I also used it during the event to grind the Object 292. The T-29 sits in the 4th rank of the American tech tree, a battle rating 7.0 in arcade, realistic and simulator. It will set you back 35 British pounds on the Gaijin store, which is probably around 45 to 50 dollars in American money. As you can see from this image, in rank 4 we have a plethora of other tanks to take along in your lineup, including quite a lot of premiums which I have been sad enough to buy over the years. Of note is the sisters to the T29, the T30, as well as the M46 Tiger. But there are many other Tetri vehicles in rank 4, which also sit at around battery rating 7.0, most notably the T92 and its infamous APDS round. This means the T29 has a formidable lineup to go along with it. This lineup consists of howitzers, heavy tanks, light tanks, tank destroyers, and a wide range of different cast points. This makes it one of the most formidable lineups in War Thunder and my personal go-to grinding BR. While normally I'd recommend people to stay as far away from the American tech tree as possible, mainly due to the player base or player skill being rather suboptimal, shall we say, but that is mainly at top tier. Down at rank four, the American players are pretty good. So if you're one of the few people who don't already own the T29, is it worth investing your hard-earned money into this American behemoth? Starting as always with the engine and mobility, and we're powered by an engine producing 770 horsepower. Combined with a vehicle's weight of 64.2 tons, it gives us a power to weight ratio of 12 horsepowers per ton. This isn't fantastic to be honest, but it's a lot better than the German Tiger II for example. And while the tank is incredibly sluggish when you are trying to rotate the hull or turn on the spot, at least when it comes to acceleration, the T29 is a decent little mover. I'd say that the T29 is mobile, but not very maneuverable. It can go in a straight line pretty well, but you can't really maneuver around the place, if you know what I'm trying to say. We have a top speed of 36 km per hour and a reverse speed of 14 km per hour. So even if we do extend a little bit, we can pull back quite easily. And as we'll see in the next section, we do also have some incredibly reliable armor. When it comes to survivability, the T29 is a little bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, it has pretty formidable armor, at least for the majority of the tanks it faces. But on the other hand, if we take a look at this cutaway, we can see that the crew compartment is basically crammed full of humans and ammunition. Things famous for not really reacting too well to several kilos of solid steel, moving at high velocity going through a vehicle. The first thing to mention is that the T29 has a crew of six men. You have a driver and a, I guess, engineer sat next to him, as well as a gunner and commander, and two loaders located on the left-hand side of the vehicle. The large crew count of six people means that if you are being shot at by a sub-caliber ammunition, it is quite hard to knock the tank out in a single hit. On the other hand though, the large stockpile of ammunition dotted all around the vehicle makes an experienced opponent easily able to kill you in a single hit, especially a hit on the side of the vehicle. If we take a look at the side, we can see that the majority of the ammunition stored in the T29 is located in the lower part of the hull. This is by far the biggest weak spot of every American heavy tank to be honest. The side armor is very vulnerable and all of the ammunition is stored here. So any penetrating round in the lower part of the hull is almost certainly going to detonate your ammunition, killing you in a single hit. Luckily though, the armor protection of the T29 is pretty decent, at least at medium engagement ranges. 
Against a Tiger II H's long barreled 88mm gun, we can see at 500 meters we can still be penetrated fairly easily. You'll notice that the upper frontal plate is rather thin but it is well angled, but the bow machine gun is still vulnerable to an experienced player. The gun mantlet as well is only 8 inches thick or 200 millimeters. This isn't going to save you against all of the super heavy tanks or the tanks with very high velocity guns, but against some of the more normal power guns firing back at you at battery rating 7.0, for example, take a look at the Panther's gun, it can't really damage us at 500 meters apart from the lower frontal plate. This means in practice, the only tanks that you really have to worry about are a few mediums with heat of fast rounds, but the majority of the tanks which can do damage to you are going to be other heavy tanks. This means you can brawl very effectively. You can basically bully people and dominate them. It's kind of like a good old meta. It feels like the heavy tank does have a place, which isn't really, it's not really apparent at battery rating 8.0. If you step up one, the heavy tank is kind of dead by then. But at 7.0, there is a healthy heavy tank play style. Moving on to the firepower, and to start, it is worth pointing out that this tank does have three 50 caliber machine guns, two mounted coaxially, and one 50 cal on the roof. This means even if your commander gets knocked out, you still have two 50 cals, which are controlled by the gunner. This is very good for basically shooting anything with lightly armored vehicles, especially little light tanks and as well open top vehicles. It's one of the many ways that the T-29 can bully its opposition. But well, moving on to the real firepower and we are armed with the 105mm T5E2 cannon. We can take 63 rounds of ammunition into a battle, but only 8 of them are classed as first stage ammunition. But because our reload rate is so long, you aren't exactly going to be out firing your ready rack. We have 10 degrees of gun depression and 15 degrees of gun elevation. The turret can traverse at a maximum rate of 18 degrees per second with an ace crew, which is decent but not amazing. But something that is a little bit crap is the 4 degrees of gun uh, vertical targeting speed. This is basically how fast the gun can raise or lower. It means that if an enemy is above or below you, it can take quite a while to get that gun barrel on target. But well, moving on to the reload, with a stock crew, it's going to take us 16.25 seconds or 16 and a quarter seconds. But with an ace crew, we can get that drop down to 12.5 seconds. It's well worth investing in your expert and ace crews, especially on a heavy tank, because it's going to drastically decrease that reload time and it's going to help you repair damage, which you are inevitably going to get as you are a brawling heavy tank. But what about the ammunition for the T29? Well, our stock shell is the Solid Shot APC BC T32, traveling at 900 meters per second. It can penetrate around 10 inches of armor at point blank range. You do also have the T29E3. This is an armor piercing composite rigid shell. It's basically useless. It takes so long to reload these rounds. You basically don't want to be firing a little dart at people. The APCR round is famous in War Thunder for being absolutely useless, so I wouldn't even take it into a match to begin with. The stock APC BC round is made better by the addition of the T13. This again is a APC BC round, but it now has an explosive filler and a fuse. It travels slightly slower at 899 meters per second, but contains the equivalent of 180 grams of TNT, giving it a fantastic post pen damage effect it can also penetrate 10 inches of armor the same as the solid shot giving you the best of both worlds with the only real downside of the t13 being the rather long reload which of course isn't this ammunition's fault like the tiger 2's 88 mm gun the 105 mm on the t29 is pretty much famous for its penetrating one-shot capabilities if you can manage to penetrate an enemy you are almost certainly going to kill it in a single hit. This, in my opinion, negates the rather long reload rate. You just have to watch out for if you are being ganged up on by several players. But with your 350 caliber machine guns, you can track enemy tanks and kind of pin them down in between your reload. So the T-29 has fantastic firepower against the majority of the tanks it faces. But let's take a look at some of the vehicles you are going to seriously struggle to face. And there's only really three of them in my opinion. The first is the IS-4M. As you can see, even at point blank range, 
our APC BC round isn't really able to penetrate any part of this guy's armor scheme. So you're better off going for his barrel or tracking him and then just running away. Same thing again for the mouse. This again is only going to be facing an up tier. He can technically go through the turret cheeks if you get right close up to him, but it's going to be very, very hard to do reliably and especially at long range. Even from the side, the mouse is quite a hard cookie to crack in the T29. So again, I'd just avoid him. If he kills you, just spawn in cast and drop a £2,000 bomb in his head. And finally, we have the Conqueror. The Conqueror is vulnerable on its lower frontal plate, but its turret cheeks and upper frontal plate are basically just completely unable to be penetrated by your own gun. And with his absolutely monster 120mm, you stand uh, no chance of stopping that APDS round either. So against the IS-4M, the Mouse and the Conqueror, I'd recommend um, growing some extra brain cells and figuring a way out to kill him, maybe flank him or wait for him to shoot one of your stupid teammates and then try and breach him or barrel him. I don't really know. Anyway, apart from these three tanks, you can basically bully every other tank in the game around your battle rating. So, should you buy the T-29? Well, if you're interested in grinding out the American tech tree, or you just want a fun vehicle to play, or to learn the American heavy tanks, the T-29 is a fantastic vehicle in my opinion. I don't have a content creator code, but feel free to use one of the other guys, support someone. It is it's well worth the money in my opinion. I don't see any downsides to the T-29. You have a fantastic vehicle, fantastic gun, fantastic ammunition. You have a fantastic lineup, fantastic reward bonuses, fantastic casts. The Tetri vehicles are pretty good. I don't really see any downsides other than mainly the American uh, players around you, but that goes, for, that's, that goes without saying for pretty much every rank of the American Tetri. The only real downside is you have to separate yourself from around $40, but I'd say it is well worth it. Anyway, lads, I'd like to thank my YouTube members, Alola Alphonse, Tans, Deboa Alex, Dr. Bob, Tomsa013, RS28 Sarmat, Shlunty, Van Haler, Diogenes, Econ, and Alan Hacker. Thank you very much, lads, for supporting the channel. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave a comment saying solid shot. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member by pressing the join button. Check out the Discord server where I frequently squad up with my members and friends. And don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks again for watching lads and I'll see you in the next video.